Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the best-selling author, award-winning international speaker, industry-leading salesperson, and a remarkable survivor, Christine Clifford. I want to start by asking a question. How many of you are willing to admit that you've ever laughed so hard that you cry? Well, well, most of you are willing to admit that, right? Well, now I want to know how many of you are willing to admit that you have ever laughed so hard that you might like, actually like wet your pants? Is, is anybody willing to admit that? Because if you're sitting next to somebody who just raised their hand, I suggest you might want to move. Because hopefully we're going to have some wonderful laughs together this afternoon. And you know what I've learned going through my cancer experience, as many of you have as well, is that cancer is a very difficult subject for most people to discuss. In fact, when my mother went through her cancer experience, and it would have been well over 35 years ago now, the children in our family weren't even allowed to say the word cancer. We had to refer to it as the C word, or my mother's illness. And you know what makes it even more of a challenge? Is when you have breast I mean, let's face it, it's not one of those body parts we use in our everyday vocabulary. It isn't like head or arm or leg. And you know what I find so ironic about my entire situation is that all of my life, there's been a focus on my breasts. Now this actually started when I was a young girl back in high school. I had kind of one of those strange little bodies. I had a size 18 inch waist and wore a 36 C bra. I was the envy of all my girlfriends and the taunts of all the young boys. And I don't know how many of you can remember back to those high school days, but we used to all have nicknames for each other. Now, the tallest girl in my class was called Stick. The skinniest was Bones. The one with the red hair, Carrot Top. Well, my nickname, this is actually in my high school yearbook for all of my posterity to see, was Melons. <laughs> oh, yes. Good old Mel. And I actually grew up in Southern California, and I was a cheerleader in high school, and I cheered for a team called the San Marino Titans. And I used to get up there on the football field on Friday night, all anxious to cheer my team on to victory. And I'd start out with this yell, and I'd go, T! I.T. <laughs> and I would get about that far, and all the boys in the audience would start yelling and screaming and whistling and throwing their hats up in the air. And no matter what I did, I could never ever get through the A.N.S. Titans yell me out. I get asked questions like, Christine, did it hurt? How does it look? Do you still have it? I knew I had truly become a singular sensation when three days after I got home from the hospital, my youngest son at the time, Brooks, answered our doorbell and yelled up to me, Mom, more flowers for your breast. <laughs> And while I had no hair, the famous supermodel of my era, Cindy Crawford, came out with her book of beauty. Now, I don't know how many of you might have bought Cindy's book 13 years ago, but I figured anyone who didn't have any hair could use all the help she could get. So I bought Cindy's book, and I was reading through it, and Cindy 
talk about how even one tiny little eyebrow out of place can make such a difference. <laughs> you know, I figured if she'd just give it to me, I'd plant it on my head. <laughs> well, then, of course, all my well-meaning friends kept saying things to me like, Christine, don't worry about it. When your hair comes back, it's going to grow in thicker and curlier and more beautiful than ever. Well, I don't know about any of you who've been through this experience, but when my hair was growing back, I looked something like a cross between Andy Warhol and Lyle Lovett. <laughs> it came back all gray, and I now choose to do that coloring thing about every four weeks. And it's absolutely stick straight. But I have to tell you, it feels wonderful to be able to say, I'm having a bad hair day, <laughs> instead of a no hair day. And you know what having cancer just did for me personally was reiterate one of those life lessons that we all learned as children. And that is that beauty is only skin deep. It's what's inside that matters. People are the only creatures on earth who can celebrate the joy of being alive. Laughter flings open the shutters and lets the sun shine in. A shared gift of laughter is a priceless gift to the spirit. And it's a great poke in the eye to the adversary cancer patients are struggling every day to beat. <laughs> now, how many of you thought of jokes as the thing that makes you laugh? How many of you thought of jokes? Several of you. Well, while I was going through my chemotherapy, there was a gentleman going through it with me who'd also lost all of his hair. So we nicknamed each other the Captains of Chrome. And one day he came running up to me and he's like, Christine, Christine, do you notice anything different about me? Well, he was so adamant. I, I, I looked him up and down and I looked him round and round and you know, I finally had to say, you know, Bill, I'm sorry, I, I really don't. I parted my hair on the other side. <laughs> well, and now, you know, awkward situations can cause you to burst into laughter. Has that ever happened to you? You, you start laughing at something and you go, oh my gosh, this is so inappropriate. I have got to stop laughing. Well, I had many awkward situations going through my treatments, but let me just share a couple of my favorites with you. At one point during my chemotherapy, I was required by my employer to go to a black tie function in New York City on behalf of Toys R Us. So I went to my closet and searched through and found my best dress, and then I went back to my closet and searched through and found my best wig, and off I flew to Manhattan. Well, Sharon Stone was the MC, and Patti LaBelle was the entertainment, and Sharon came slinking out onto the stage that night wearing this little black dress with these two little spaghetti straps, and she had her assets quite prominently displayed. And I hate to admit it, but she looked like a million bucks. And she did this heart-rendering story about all of the charities we were donating to that night. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. And then Patti LaBelle came out and started doing her thing. Well, at one point, Patti went backstage and grabbed Sharon and brought her back out on the stage to dance. And Sharon reached down into the audience and found five willing men who practically killed themselves to get on the stage with her. And at one point, this one gentleman got just a little bit overzealous. 
he flung Sharon out and he flung her back and just as he did that, the two straps to her dress broke and her top came down. <laughs> well, this woman did not miss a beat. She grabs the microphone from Patti LaBelle, turns to the audience and says, oh, please. Anyone with $7.50 has already seen them before. <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh, that's what I've been doing wrong. I should have been charging the doctors to take a look at all of this. Well, we're talking about awkward situations. I'm gonna share another one of my favorites. At one point uh, during my treatments, my husband and I decided to take a break from that cold Minnesota winter. So we flew off to Scottsdale, Arizona. And while we were there, there was an event being played on the senior PGA golf tour called The Tradition. And we bought tickets and I'm an avid golfer. I was just so excited, standing on the tee, watching three of my idols in golf tee off. This was Jack Nicklaus, Raymond Floyd, and Tom Weiskopf. Well, a gust of wind came up and blew my hat and my hair right off my head, right into the middle of the fairway. Now, folks, there were about 10,000 people lining this fairway, and there was not a peep. <laughs> so I took a deep breath, and I went under the ropes, and I ran out into the middle of the fairway, grabbed my hat and my hair, and I stopped and turned to the golfers and said, by the way, gentlemen, the wind is blowing left to right. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here with me this afternoon. Oh.